in the war against major crime. There's a new team of officers out on patrol. Handpicked. Their task to tackle the most hardened criminals. Get on the floor now. Meet the Sentinels. I want to catch bad guys. I want to get in people's faces. Accept nothing, believe no one, and challenge everything. The latest police tactics revealed for the first time. They drive the fastest police cars on the road. We are left, left, left. Risk is high. It's fast, it's fast. Decamp. They use targeted live criminal intelligence. It's a black Bentley Continental. With the help of an all-seeing matrix of cameras. It should be hitting them within the next 60 seconds. Open the window! I think it's going to smash! Open the window! The result? Criminals face overwhelming force. We're going to make life as difficult for them as we absolutely can. Again and again and again. The most wanted hunted down. Yeah, whoever it was, he floored it. In a deadly game of cat and mouse. He advises violent. He's got warning signals for weapons. This vehicle is possibly involved in human trafficking. Open the door! These are the Sentinels. This is where the excitement really starts to build up. And this is Fast Justice. Coming up, the Sentinels do what they do best and take out a major organised crime group. Open the window! Oh, you're going to smash! A series of intense chases. I'm a little bit nervous now. Dramatic stops. Open the door! And dogged detective work. Right, so this comes up. Reveal the secret tricks of the drug trafficking trade. This may be a cash or a drugs bag. The Sentinels are an elite vehicle-borne unit. Their sole purpose is to hunt down and capture Suffolk's most serious criminals. The Ipswich team are led by Sergeant Mike Moon. Morning, guys. Uh, so we've got um, some intelligence around uh, some vehicles that are involved in county line drug dealing that we expect may be coming into the county today, and they may be coming in convoy. County lines is a, is a massive, massive problem, especially in like smaller rural towns like Ipswich is. The vehicles are known to the Metropolitan Police and what we do know is that they're coming up to Suffolk on a daily basis and are backwards and forwards. So we can suspect that if they are en route here, then they should, either one or two of the vehicles in convoy, will be carrying drugs. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Great. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank, Thank you. you. Police intelligence indicates there are three suspect cars on their way to Suffolk, and the Sentinel's plan is to take out all three in one go. Oh, here we go, here we go. But it's a complex mission, and they don't know when the suspected dealers will arrive. In control today is PC Sam Chittock. Remember part 81, do you see? For the next 10 hours, he'll be the vital link between the Sentinels on the road and a database of intelligence on hundreds of vehicles associated with crime, known as the hot list. My job in control will be to monitor the hot list, so any vehicles of interest we've got out and about, and relay them via the radio to the team on the ground, and basically just be their eyes and ears um, from above, really. 808182, do you see? 81. In Sentinel Car 81 are Mufti and Dan Newson. Sam sees the suspected drug dealer cars are on the move. One of the vehicles we're interested in earlier um, has started moving north towards us. Sam Maples and George Harvey are in car A2. They'll work together with Dan and Mufti targeting the lead car in the group, a black Mercedes. Sergeant Moon is going it alone in the unmarked car 83, on the lookout for the other vehicles, a silver Mercedes and a black Audi. It appears that the silver A-Class is about 10 minutes behind in its journey compared to the black uh, Mercedes. Already they face a serious compromise. The suspect vehicles appear to have spread out, perhaps to avoid detection. Third vehicle, black A-Class, appears to be 40 minutes behind that, um, travelling a similar route. So there may be multiple vehicles entering today. A1, receive that. Oh, here we go. 
with three potential linked cars all traveling at separate times. The Sentinels race to get into their strike positions fast. That is 12.20, 12.20, so at least two, three minutes now. Timing is crucial. If one of the suspect cars spots the officers, they could easily warn the other vehicles. Sam starts setting the trap. If we could have two units covering northbound track, one unit on the side of um, Tesco, just so we can have to start the vehicle should it turn round and head eastbound. Hey, one. We'll be arriving at the pad in the next 30 seconds. The pad is a lay-by next to some of Ipswich's busiest roads, where the police can lie in wait for their targets. 8-2, we'll be there within 50 seconds. Yeah, 8-1, we're at the pad. The team are now in position. The plan is to box a suspect car in. Sergeant Moon is a few miles down the road awaiting the second suspect car. We're waiting here now to see if we can get an early spot on it. There's some stuff coming in lane one. Lane one looks potential. Any sudden move from any of the units and the high-powered Mercedes could get away. Or worse, lead to a pursuit during a very busy afternoon's traffic. Howdy. Hey, our second lane, is that it? There we go, lane, lane one. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, 8-1, it's in lane one, potentially going west on the 14. We're just going to have to stop it as soon as we can. Let's try and stop it on the slip. 8-2, if you go past us, and we'll just pull it into the verge. Here it's eight. Okay, okay, okay. As 8-1 cover the rear of the car, 8-2 races in front to force the car to the side. Open the window! Open the window! Oh, you're going to smash! Open the window! Put your hands where I can see them! Keep your hands where I can see them! It's a textbook stop for the Sentinels. On the back here. Let's get this clear. Right, I need to explain a few things to you. You are detained at this time for a Section 23 Misuse of Drugs Act search. We're looking for drugs. We've got information which says you may be in possession of drugs and they may be for supply. Have you got any ID on you in the car? Mm. No ID. Yeah. Right, what's your nationality? Albanian. Albanian? The stop has taken place on the busiest road in the county. So they need to get the man and his motor shifted somewhere safer. Hey, one, just quickly, our stop is all in order. We're going to be getting off at Sproughton and we'll be able to do everything there in a controlled environment. You have no further clear the cars for a little while. Receive that, thank you. As the man is driven to a safer location, he seems fairly relaxed for someone in his current position. Is there anything in the car which shouldn't be? Anything on your person which shouldn't be? But as Sam and George search his car, they spot something that could throw the entire operation. When I got in here, that phone was on messenger audio. You talked to someone. So he was on the phone? Yeah, but it'd been on 18 minutes. That was already on before we'd put a stop in. The phone is now ringing. Who's trying to get hold of him? Could he have warned off the two following drivers in the convoy? It's a risk the Sentinels can't take. So Mike gets moving to stop the second car fast, but that's proven very difficult on such a busy road. Traffic flow is very heavy. I have probably five or six vehicles for cover. A traffic unit joins him. The plan is for it to get in front of the car and signal the driver to leave the carriageway. Held in traffic. But will the driver be compliant? Appears at this stage he's compliant. Vehicle is on a follow, uh, single occupant. The driver plays ball and it's another perfect stop. But will Mike find anything inside the car? 10 miles up the road, Dan and Mufti are still digging into the Albanian man's backstory. You said you were known to police, what are you known to police? You're going short. You got a license? 
What brings you to Ipswich? A girl? And where does she live? Ilford. 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 Whereabouts in Ipswich? You don't know. Difficult to find her then. Yeah. The man's story's all over the place. But searching his car, Sam Maples and George make a seemingly innocent discovery. He's got wet wipes. Yeah. Did you find some really <laughs> ones in the front? Yeah, funny colour. It's a packet of wet wipes. There's quite a few discarded used ones. Okay. And Sam found some by the driver's seat that look quite <laughs> Sometimes drug users, drug dealers will use them for plugging. So when, um, when dealers are plugging drugs, they'll use baby wipes. Could you explain what plugging is? In the context of drugs. <laughs> OK. Um... Right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> so plugging is like a... It's a method to try and secrete items up one's bumhole. Um, and that can be anything. They can, they can hide drugs up there, uh, mobile phones. And the use of baby wipes is to... It's quite a messy operation, putting something up so they obviously need to clean up afterwards. There's no nice way of putting that. Back at HQ, Sam's got the latest intel on the suspect from the police national computer. 8-1, do you receive? Dead. His name, PNC. Warnings, firearms, escaper, drugs, sever. He's a warning marker for immigration, foreign national offender. Failed to stop this year. Um, possessed controlled drug cocaine this year, dangerous driving, entering the UK without leave, other drug and driving offences. Despite claiming he's only been stopped once for driving without insurance, the man has a very long list of serious crimes. But no drugs have been found in either of the two cars stopped so far. The boot done, is it? Yeah, unfortunately, nothing. We thought there was going to be a mother load in that vehicle of either cash or drugs. When we stopped the vehicle and found nothing, um, it was a shock, really, because of the intelligence we had, and albeit frustrating as well. But it now leaves the team thinking of ways to disrupt the gang. And further checks on the first driver... He's a disqualified driver. ...allow the Sentinels to do just that. That's all received. I'm arresting you for uh, driving whilst disqualified. OK, I'm going to caution you. You don't have to say anything. It may harm your defence. You do not mention when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. You've done all that side, haven't you? Yeah. There's got to be more to this than a disco driver. Despite the used baby wipes, a strip search of the man revealed nothing. Although it isn't the result the team was hoping for, it still means a suspected drug dealer who doesn't have a licence or insurance is off the road. The man was sentenced to 14 weeks for those offences, but the Sentinels were left wondering what the convoy of cars was up to. Everything didn't add up for it just to be a disqualified driver. You just knew that there was more to this and that we would get to the bottom of it eventually. It's been three days since the Sentinels stopped two cars that they believe were linked to a drug dealing gang travelling into Ipswich. Open the window! Open the window! Although it led to one arrest for driving whilst disqualified, no drugs were found in either of the cars. But the team haven't given up. We do not want them to pull the wool over our eyes. We do not want them to be driving away with nothing having happened to them. Um, and when we hear that vehicle's coming into our county, that is it. Everything stops for that. Get in, George. Let's go. Black Audi Q5 is one of the vehicles we were interested in. He's now heading northbound towards Ipswich. Today, Mike is on control. And one of the gang's number plates has been spotted on an ANPR camera, heading back into Ipswich. We are leaving, just leaving Hanford Road. If you can move it, that'd be great. Mufti and George in car 82 are the nearest unit, so need to get into position fast. With Sam Chittock in car 83 not far behind. 
The previous stops and arrests clearly haven't deterred this third car from travelling into Ipswich. It could mean they don't know the police are onto them. The Metropolitan Police have made direct contact with us and told us this vehicle is of interest. It's been used over a period of months. Could be drug supply, could be money laundering, could be racketeering, we don't know. 8-2 to control, we are now arriving at the pad. Should have two minutes, two minutes. Both cars arrive at the pad, the Sentinel's watch point, with just minutes to spare. 8-3 at the pad. Got that, thank you. And once again, the trap is set. What colour? Dark. Dark. Should be with you in the next 60 seconds. My view is completely blocked now. With no additional cameras at their waiting point, the Sentinels have to rely on spotting the car through the busy three lanes of traffic. That opens it. Lane. Possible lane one, three cars back. Yes, yes, confirmed. That is the vehicle. Great, good. And already the team notice a similar pattern to last week's stop. So the subject vehicle is currently lane one in the lane that would indicate it's going to go onto the A14 westbound. That's the same as the other guys. So he's going the same direction as the other two vehicles. As the Sentinels move in, they have to battle the oncoming rush hour traffic. Oh my God. Subject vehicle still lane one. We'll do this before it gets to the end of the slip. Sam takes the front with Mufti and George blocking the rear. Open the door. Give me your hands. Undo your seatbelt. Undo your seatbelt. Seatbelt. Open this door. You'll be detained under section 23 of the Misuse of Drug Deck. Put it in park. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. Like the previous stop, the man is alone and heading in the same direction. So what is he up to? You're being detained under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. Information that the vehicle is being involved oh, in county right. lines drug supply, all right? I don't speak sorry. I don't speak English. You don't speak English? OK, do you understand anything I'm saying? A little bit? A little bit, yeah. OK, so you're being detained for a drug search. Drug search? Drug? Drug search. What language do you speak? Albania. Albania, OK. No problem for me. Is there a problem for you? I don't know. What's in the car? Oh, don't, don't worry. No worries? No worries. Nothing to worry about? Absolutely. While George deals with the language barrier, it's down to Mufti and Sam to get the search of the car underway. And this time, they've got the help of trusty police dog, Barry. We're going to tear this car apart. With the information we have in relation to county lines, they're not going to go on and get stopped with drugs and cash on them, and they're going to want to hide it anywhere possible so that we can't find it. Barry's nose is trained to sniff out drugs, weapons and money that could easily be concealed in a car. But it looks like someone's been poking around the car already. That's loose, look. Yeah. A number of the compartments in the rear of the vehicle were, were loose, which for a modern car, you wouldn't think you would find. Um, and I started thinking that there may be something within the, the rest of the vehicle. You work here? No. No work. Where do you live? In uh, London. You live in London? London. So what, what are you going to Ipswich to do? Ipswich, where everybody looking. There's not much to see in Ipswich. The man claims he's here to see the beautiful sights of Ipswich, but Mufti knows there's more to his trip than he's letting on. So far, the search by police dog Barry has turned up nothing. But there is an interesting cash in the boot. So in the boot of his vehicle, he's got a baseball bat um, with the information that um, he's involved in the supply of uh, drug dealing in county lines. Um, it may be that this used, is used as an offensive weapon. Um, he's got no ball with it, so he's not going to be able to play baseball. If there was a ball for that bat, Barry would have sniffed it out by now. So instead, it's a strike for the driver. I think the fact that we're dealing, what we suspect with is um, organised crime, then he can come in and answer questions about that. Yep, we'll seize that. He can get lifted for offensive weapon. Roger, Dodger, thank you. 
So my colleagues have just updated me with the result of the search. They've found in the boot of the car a uh, baseball bat. So at this time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of being in possession of an offensive weapon in a public place. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned, something which you later rely on in court, and anything you do say can be given in evidence. Do you understand? We'll go through it all again with an interpreter, but at the moment, this moment, you're under arrest. Do you understand that bit? This moment? Yes, you're under arrest. For what? The baseball bat in the boot of the car. The man is coming in for the bat. But as police dog Barry has found no indication of drugs, it's still not the arrest the team was hoping for. You've got to be determined when you're doing this job. Just because the people we're disrupting don't have it that day, it doesn't mean that we then switch off. You've got to keep going. But just as Sam and Mufti are about to give up, yet another loose part of the car reveals a startling discovery. Right, so this comes up. Hidden behind this radio is an empty bag. I knew that we'd missed something on those first two stops. And when I found that hide on that other vehicle, I thought, yes, this is what we're looking for here. They're going to hide stuff anywhere. There's nothing else in there which may suggest that this man may be on the start of his rounds and this may be a cash or a drugs bag. Unfortunately, at this time, it's empty, but we're going to put it back and plead ignorance to it. So when we discover something like a hide in a vehicle, obviously, we want to be able to replace that without the criminal knowing that we know, with the intention that we will stop that vehicle again later. It's just simple, don't let them know that we know. After stopping and searching cars believed to be part of a drug running ring, the Sentinels are yet to uncover any drugs. But they have gained a valuable piece of intel in the form of a hidden compartment. Unfortunately, this time it's empty, but we're going to put it back and plead ignorance to it. It's given the Sentinels an idea. The first car they stopped that also came back empty is still in the impound. So Sam Chittock and Sam Maples decide to pay a visit and turn detective. We've come here now just to make sure we haven't missed anything in terms of um, hides. We know the technique they've used earlier, and we're just going to check the similar areas today and make sure that there isn't anything we've missed. The last car they stopped had bags hidden behind the radio. No such luck in this car. Nothing else, nothing else, sorry, is it? Now I've tried to pull these out, and then the vents, these vents are solid. That's all stuck in. This is never this going to come out. But a bit of persuasion with Sam Maple's penknife suddenly reveals another hiding place. And you have to be determined to get a result like that, and you have to have the drive to keep looking and just keep motivated and looking and looking. And it's great for that job to keep building up the intelligence, building this information for further stops. We're going to put the bags back and everything back in there as we found it, close it up, because the last thing we want is to let them know we've, we've found it. The car will now be returned to its owner, and the Sentinels will wait for the gang to return. After two and a half weeks of nothing, the team get the news they've been waiting for. An ANPR camera has flagged new activity from the gang. The County Lines vehicle has activated a camera on the outskirts of the town, so the team are trying to get into the perfect location to try and intercept that vehicle. But in a twist to the tail, the cops know from the number plate it's the same silver Mercedes Sergeant Moon had stopped previously. Last time it was driving into Ipswich and nothing was found. But this time it's leaving and the Sentinels hope it could be carrying a stash. Sentinels are about making sure criminals know we're going to make life as difficult for them as we absolutely can again and again and again. It's the only one I really want to get. It's the one that keeps avoiding us and it'd be really good to get it tonight. 
the Sentinels all have to pass an advanced driving skills course. George and Dan in car 81 head straight for the A14. Good driving conditions though, Georgie. We can make a bit of progress. Whilst in car 82 are Sophie and Sam. So we're just going to make some ground, anticipating its sort of next location, if you like. The units split up to try and intercept the Mercedes on its way out of the county, but they haven't identified the driver and don't know which route the car will take. I guess we can we can plot up either for another reciprocal of Sporton or in the town. Yeah, receive that. We'll just have to see what it does in the next couple of minutes. It's just the waiting game now to see now if they've chosen the right route or it's just, yeah, let's see what happens. It's just cat and mouse, isn't it? But we're always on the back foot. Yeah. Car 82 stake out near the A14. On the route, the suspect vehicle entered Ipswich in case it returns the same way. 81 scour the A12, the other main road out of town. All that's needed is for the Mercedes to unwittingly reveal itself. We've got a vehicle sat at either of those locations to see if it can it passes through. A1 will go 14, up to Asda. Sure enough, the target suddenly pings one of the ANPRs. Vehicle's in lane two. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it, George. It's a race against time to get there. They think the car is already on the A14, but it could easily leave the dual carriageway and take a back route. So Sophie and Sam race to a high vantage point. Eight two on the overbridge. Should be arriving with them any second. Sophie and Sam right above it. I'm a little bit nervous now. Come on. There we go. There it is. Where is it? Under. 8-2, it's gone underneath. Continue. Right. Just held at the traffic lights, just trying to get through. So it's obviously a partial temporary loss at the moment. Stand by. No, don't say that. Dan and George are waiting further ahead on another bridge. Vehicle was westbound under Cock Dot Bridge. I think that's it up there. It was it? in front of the heavy, the red one. Eight two hit the carriageway and floor it, and quickly catch up with the vehicle. Eight two behind the subject vehicle, but no vehicle for cover. Now approaching Sproulton Junction Fifty Four. Stand by for direction travel. Finally. Let's hope we find someone. Anonymous car. So the other car's now going to try and get with them so they can do a, a stop on that vehicle together. The plan is for car 81 to join the carriageway behind 82. They'll then signal for the suspect's vehicle to exit off the slip road. Subject vehicle still A14 westbound, 200 yard marker for Attention. junction 52. Stand by. We're making progress towards you, trying to avoid the use of blue lights, not to spook him. We're just passing 52 ourselves. My palms are, palms are sweaty. We've got eyes on behind, so when you're ready. Sole occupant, male driver, follow me is now on. Instead of boxing the car in to force it to stop, Sophie and Sam switch on some rear lights instructing the car to follow them, with Sam and George covering the rear. Hello there, sir. How you doing? You right? Do you mind just switching the engine off for us, please? Do you have your driving license on you at all? Not with me. Not with you? No. Any identification at all? No. Nothing? No. Okay. 
Without any identification, it's very difficult for the police to carry out checks on individuals. Can I pass your driver details? Um, he's got no idea on him whatsoever. Mm, he wants standard. it provided. Yeah, of course, go ahead. Straight away, as soon as they're telling us they've got no ID on them, that's a red flag, straight away. Um, at this moment in time, you're going to be detained for the purposes of Section 23, Misuse of Drugs Act search. All right, there's information um, suggesting drug supply in relation to this vehicle. And because you've got no identification on you, all right, we can't ascertain who you are to do any checks, all right? Is there anything on you that you shouldn't have? Some money. Some, Some money. money. Yeah. Go that How way. much cash are we talking? Yeah, it's more than 1,000. Whereabouts? In your pocket? Yeah. He's just told us he's got more than a thousand pounds on him, on his person. We're obviously now going to start searching the car. Received. Why would you have a grand in your pocket? It's a good question. And not the only one the Sentinels want answers to. The details the man has given have drawn a blank. From control, I've just checked on Orbis and it doesn't show him as a current occupant at that address. It leaves Sophie with no option. At this moment in time, it's 1808, and I'm going to be arresting you on suspicion of money laundering, OK? With the man arrested, the team can go ahead and search his car. All right then, George. Thorough. As they're well aware of the clever hiding places this gang are using, no part of the car will go unturned. And it's not long before suspicions are aroused. OK, so the one on the far right has got a black material at the end of it. These ones go straight through. Determined to secure evidence, Sergeant Moon arrives to oversee the search. And once again, after some serious prodding and poking by the Sentinels... There's something tucked in there, is there? They've found yet another hiding place. I just shot my torch into the air vent. I could see some black material at the back of the vent. So with a little bit of persuasion, the vents come away and I could immediately just see this black sock, which I'm sure Mercedes don't install themselves, in the vent, so I'm straight away thinking, bingo, we're on here. I feel something in there. There is something in there? Yeah, there's definitely something in there. If you feel there's something in there, there's we'll get something CSI. inside there. We'll get CSI to open up then. Unless the driver didn't want to air his dirty laundry in public, these are very strange places to keep his socks. So a forensics team will need to carry out a test for drugs. White powder. Little vials full of white powder. Vials full of white powder. Just without touching the vials, just tip, tip them, them in there. It's the find the team have been waiting for. I open up the sock and lo and behold, we've got vials of white powder in there. And I'm thinking, finally, we've got these guys for something, something decent. And yeah, just all went from there, really. That's been recovered, um, it's a few vials of white powder. That's great. Nice one. After three weeks of tenacious detective work, the team's persistence has paid off. The man was charged with driving while disqualified, driving without insurance and obstructing police. He was jailed for 10 weeks. At the time of filming, the drug investigation was still ongoing. It's another gang car off the road and a major win for the Sentinels. Well, I was really pleased that we um, got hold of this individual. I think it does show that the, the benefits of just keeping going and, and working the intelligence and working, just, just, you know, just being relentless in that, in that pursuit of disruption, really. The Sentinel's work is all about intelligence-led policing. But sometimes the system will flag up a car before the team know exactly who or what they're dealing with. Part and parcel of the job, really, is, is why I joined. You know, every day is different. You just don't know who you're going to meet and, and what they're going to be up to. But that's just all part of the fun, really. Sophie Mitchell and Sam Maples are on patrol in car A2 when a car drives past that's on their hot list. The Sentinel's record of cars suspected to be used for drug dealing or other illegal purposes. And I was like, Cleo, that come past, and he said, oh, it's on the screen. But by the time they turn around, has it managed to get away from them again? Right. Where that was it? I don't know that. Weaving in and out of residential streets. Where'd it go? 
this time they catch a lucky break. The driver's stopped and he's out of the car, ready to meet them. Hello, mate, you all right? Good. Is it just yourself and you Just come over this side. Is it just two of you in the car, is it? No, right, um, we've just got to run some details, OK? The driver's two young children and a female passenger are also in the car. 82 control, can we in the queue for a moving check? I think there's one on our list that hit earlier. Yeah, stand by. At control, Sam Chittock pulls up the intel on the car and the driver. On the roadside, Sam Maples and Sophie start to dig into the driver's backstory. Have you got your ID on you, please? Why, what do I need ID for? Evasive responses arouse suspicions. Have you got your driving licence on you at all? Yeah, of course she has. Just run some checks on you, and then we'll go from there, all right? No. Being met with attitude isn't unusual. For Sophie, it's all in a day's work. Our job is to disrupt criminals using the roads, and, and we're going to go through cars and documents with a fine-tooth comb to see if we can find offences. The man's not happy with all the questions. Up until now, it turns out he's been having a good day. So where are you off to today? I appreciate you've got your kids with you. Uh, just going to do a bit of shopping, book a holiday. Very nice. Book a holiday? Yeah. Very nice. I won a bit of money yesterday, so I'm going to... Oh, right, nice. Gambling man? Yeah. What on? It's for long, but 400 quid, I want seven grand, so... Seven grand? Mm -hmm. Very nice. But is his luck about to run out? Sophie spotted a problem. You're definitely going to have to have that looked at. What's that? That is totally illegal. What is it about? Well, your tyres. You've got lumps out of them. You can't have any oh. cords, cuts or anything. And that is a huge lump out of your tyre there. That's what I'll probably take to the way tonight. It's all about digging a little bit deeper. Accept nothing, believe no one and sort of challenge everything. Driver details when you're ready. He had children in the car on that day. Um, so, yeah, we're going to carry out our routine checks and, and go from there, really. Yeah, that's extremely dangerous with your kids in there, mate. All right. And his luck is going from bad to worse. As information starts to come in from control, he's in more trouble. Stand by for DL. I'm pretty sure he's unprovisional. Yes, yes, provisional licence holder. The driver doesn't have a full licence. He's a learner. You need an L plate on the back. Well, you need one on the back as well, do I? Well, yeah, you've only got one in the front, you're a provisional licence holder. No, I should have. Oh, come on, but... Definitely need to get one, because technically you can get a ticket for that. Yeah. Driving right. otherwise and according to your licence. Okay. You'll get points on your licence before you've even got your yeah. full licence. That's right, guys. An L plate falling off the back of the car may seem like an honest mistake. 82, was there any other intel at all? But then Sam on control digs up a list of priors. Yes, yes. He is known PNC, violent, he's resisted arrest on numerous occasions. Last known arrested, uh, 2017, for common assault. They now know they're dealing with a previously violent offender. Stand, stand by. Put on my way now, please. Don't need this, I mean. And the intelligence keeps coming. He uses drugs, uh, cannabis, cocaine, and drives whilst under the influence of drugs. That was um, dated end of July. The Sentinels now have reasonable cause to suspect drug driving. When was the last time you had any cannabis or cocaine? For me? Yeah. Are you serious right now? I'm asking Can you a question. Answer? I don't do it, why? You've committed a moving traffic offence by having an illegal tyre, all right? So we are going to require you to provide a specimen of saliva for roadside drug work, OK? It takes eight minutes. If it's negative, that's the end of it. OK, all right. Fine. Thank you. But when Sam goes to get the kit, the driver stops playing by the rules. No, you're not having a drink. Right. You're not having a drink. Because we, we need to do a test with you. OK, right. you're going to have to come into my space. Okay. So I'm just asking you to put I'll the move away down. from me, then. All right. People that start getting a little bit wound up and they're trying to disrupt you and interrupt and you almost try and, come on, let's just get this stop over with and, and let me on my way sort of thing because they know that there's underlying issues that actually, if we're here a little bit longer and we conduct a few checks, and we're probably going to find them. I can talk to you here. But I need to carry out a test with you at the roadside, don't I? Yes, that's fine. Yes. I pretty much don't want you to touch me too much. I don't want him to do it. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. But I'm just making sure that you don't wander away and run off. Put your hands out your pockets. I'm not running off. All right. No, I'm not saying you okay. are. I've got but nothing in my pockets. Yeah. Them. Well, I don't, I don't know what you've got in your pockets, oh, do you? So I'm asking you, it's a reasonable request. I'm asking you to keep your hands out your pockets. With the situation getting heated, Dan, are you nearby still? Sam calls for support. Yeah, I'm just around the corner. Do you want me there? Yeah, um, could you just be one, eh? Because you're getting a bit irate. Because you're getting angry, Nick. I'm not getting angry. I'm not getting angry. I'm not getting angry. I'm not getting angry. If you just cooperate and make it easier, we can get the test done yeah, okay. and get you on your okay. way, can't we? Let's do it then. Fine. 
Dan arrives to bolster the Sentinel's numbers, but Sophie's not taking any nonsense. So I asked you earlier and you said no, but when was the last time you had any cocaine or cannabis? I don't know. You don't know? I've already said to you, but I'll say it to you again. I'm going to require you to provide a specimen of saliva yes. for a roadside drug okay. Failure or refusal to do so is an offence which you may be prosecuted. Okay. Do you understand that? Okay. You need to do nine swipes to your tongue. Thank you. This test takes eight minutes to give us a result. Part of that requirement is that you remain with us for the whole of that eight minutes, OK? For 13, 13, 13, 21, I'll have a result for you. With the man's violent history, it's vital that the situation doesn't escalate. Part of the requirement is that you remain with You're us. Being hard work. I'm not being hard work, because no, if this comes up positive... Is. No, if this comes up positive, we've got to do some further testing with you. If you go in, uh, you know, at their level and start shouting and screaming at them back and stamping down authority, in my experience, it doesn't work. Um, if you're just nice and cool, calm and collected with people, and it often works in our favour. Well, you can't okay. even do one test on me. You can't do a test on me. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We do a roadside yeah. one, and then we'll take you to the police station and do another one. Yeah, yeah. Keep an eye on him. You've got to wait here. Keep an eye on me. You're not going to run away. Just wait here. Stop arguing. Why do you keep arguing? She's a mockery. Stop you arguing. Like that. Just chill. All the commotion has drawn a crowd. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah. Oh, he's my boy. I don't need to. I've got a f***ing... Quite quickly in a situation like that, you can be outnumbered very quickly with friends and family and all sorts of people coming out. So it's just trying to manage things, but also show that we are in control of the situation and we are going to do the checks we're going to do and carry out whatever we want to do. The eight minutes are up and the drug test results are in. Um, you tested positive for cocaine, all right? So at this moment in time, I'm ah! you on suspicion really? of driving a motor vehicle you, whilst exceeding the prescribed limit for specified yeah, substance. You, you do not have to say anything about the Mayhem yeah. offence. You do not mention when questioning something that should yeah, occupy in the court. Anything you do say yeah. may be given in evidence, all right? And the necessity for your arrest to take to the police station and carry out that evidence. I've got cocaine in my and I have a His look has now well and truly run out, and nothing's going this man's way. Don't stop. Listen, I don't give a could you get yourself I in I don't care, but you'll hurt my wrist. Look, get off. Once I've got your security, you just let go of me. Let, can sort you hold my arm? Right. Get, get, get off the middle. Get off the middle. To avoid any more confrontation, oh, just calm down. Oh, the team need to get him to custody quickly. So we're going to the pit. Have you been there before, Dumbler? Bloods? Um, we'll get the yeah. medic. Attack blood specimens. Then you're released. Fine. While we get, I'm while they get sent away. That's what you just got made. It's pretty fair. You haven't got to twist my arm, nigga. You know what I mean? He's taken away for a blood test to confirm levels of drugs in his system. At the time of filming, the results were still pending. If found guilty, his seven grand winnings might come in handy. The penalty for drug driving can be an unlimited fine. Keeping the county's roads safe from suspected drug drivers. Just another day in the office. And all part of the service from the Sentinels.